Okay, so this is to get the controller to match the orientation of the wrist joint. In certain cases, if this was at an angle, which is a um, it's kind of like a half a T pose, and you guys will see that in studio work, then you can take the controller and try to match it up to the wrist joint, and it won't work as easily as it will in a T pose like this because the angle would give the orientation of the controller some attributes, uh, changes inside of its rotations. Okay, so to forego that, we can actually do something like this. I will create a nerves primitive. I'm going to go to circle. I did turn off interactive creation, so I'll go to circle, and Maya will create the circle for me. I'll scale this up to about 12-ish. I believe that'll fit around the wrist of my character. I'm going to rotate this up and X 90 degrees. Nope. I need it to be 90 degrees and Z. So it's kind of facing up towards the camera, if you will, kind of like this. Okay. I will freeze the transformations on this. And you always label these first. So I guess I could label this left and either manip for manipulator or controller, it doesn't really matter. I'll just type in the full manipulator. Since that's what's what our notes were saying in here, but controller works just fine. And uh, if you guys come up with a different naming convention or the studio that you work for has their own way of naming, then that is something for you to follow. But I'll take this and I'll go to modify down to freeze transformations. So I have happy math when it comes to the controller itself. So the controller is in its location. If I had moved this, then when I create a group out of it, the group's pivot point by default will go to the origin of my grid. So my grid isn't showing right now, but I could show it. And you see that the origin of my grid is right here. Okay. So if I had moved this, I can get around the origin deal by going to edit down to group option box. And I'll go over to uh, the default settings would be this. I'll just edit reset settings. And the group pivot point will go to the origin. I just tell it to center it in the object or inside of the objects that I have selected. And it'll go to the center of that object. Okay. So I'll group this object essentially to itself. So I group the manipulator to itself, type the up arrow. There's group one, I'll double click it and I'll call it left hand manip group. Oh, I did spell it all the way, right? So I'll stick with that manipulator group. And I'll do capital GRP for group. Okay. And it's totally okay if you want to spell out group. It's really gonna be up to you. So the group note is the one that I'm going to constrain to the hand over here. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll come over here and I'll click on the wrist, which is the left hand, and I will open up my outliner because I need to select the group node. So there's my left hand manipulator group. That's the group of this manipulator. So I'll hold down control and click it. And now I have them selected as parent being the joint, child being the group node. And that's what I use to go to my animation menu set and constrain objects. I have to select the parent first, shift select the child. So I go down to parent option box and I'm going to make sure that maintain offset by default default it is turned on. So I will turn it off and then I will add the parent constraint. And what it does is it matches up the orientation of the group node and the translation data and all that stuff from where it was, it matches it to be perfectly with the orientation and translation of the joint. Okay, So it updates it to follow the joint's pivot point and align it with the pivot point orientation-wise and translation-wise. Now, if I clicked on this joint, you're going to see that I do have different data. Like The joint only has translational data. But um, this group node, I'll select this controller and tap the up arrow to get to the group node. It has the translation data and orientation data from where it was at the origin of our scene way down here. Okay, to go around that, we used the 
left hand manipulator uh, and apparent constrained it to the the joint there. So I'll just take the group node here, find the left hand manipulator, which is below it. Again, right down in here. Select it and hit delete because I only needed it to get the group node in place. Okay. Now when I select this left hand manipulator, since it was following the group node, it is already set up. So if I hit E for, for instance, my orientations for, I could use these handles, but I'll just go over here to show you. I'll click on rotate X, hold down my middle mouse button over here and change the value. Oh yeah, I didn't set up any manipulator just yet. So what I'll do is this. I'll select this, shift select the joint, go up to constrain, and I'm gonna add the orient constraint that you guys add later. Make sure that maintain offset is turned on Although I shouldn't have to worry about that now because that controller is in place perfectly. I'll hit add, but just to test it, I'll select the manipulator, go to rotate X, hold down my middle mouse button, and when I rotate X, you see that the rotate X of the joint of the hand is rotating, and that's rotating perfectly, so it's working. Rotate Y, when I rotate it, it's rotating the hand only in Y, and that is perfect. Rotate Z, up and down, that's perfect. And that is how we get a controller to match a joint that might be at an angle, okay? Now again, this one was in a T-pose, but if it was at a 45 degree angle this way, like some production rigs or production geometry, I should say, then it would have had data on here, like a 45 degree rotation or something like that. And we don't want that. We want clean data for the animator to work with. So we have this going on here. The only other thing that I would have to do since this is a new controller in this case is I would have to take the manipulator and the left arm IK and then add a point constraint or parent the IK handle to the controller. But in this case I'll just take the controller and the left arm IK, go to a point constraint, make sure and ma maintain offset is turned on and click add. And now I have the best of both worlds. I can move this and rotate it and it is perfect at least for this production setup.